Actress Judy Garland's career is marked by memorable performances, but one that really stands out is her role in The Wizard of Oz. It's a movie loved by many and is a big part of her career. What work of hers do you really like? Share your stories below and don't miss out on some interesting facts about her in this video. Judy Garland, an accomplished actress, made significant strides in Hollywood during her time and beyond. She greatly influenced the film industry through her exceptional talent, captivating audiences with her performances in many well-known films. Her influence extended beyond her era, leaving a lasting impression on future generations of actors and filmmakers. One of her standout moments was portraying Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, a timeless classic that still captivates audiences globally. Her role as Dorothy showcased her outstanding acting abilities and solidified her status as a Hollywood icon. This performance set a standard for excellence in the industry, inspiring numerous actors to pursue careers in film. Apart from her iconic role in The Wizard of Oz, she starred in many other successful films, displaying her versatility as an actress. Her ability to portray a wide range of characters endeared her to audiences and earned her critical acclaim. Judy's talent and dedication to her craft helped elevate the quality of Hollywood productions during her era. Furthermore, her influence extended beyond the silver screen. She was also a talented singer, known for her powerful vocals and emotive performances. Her musical talents were showcased in films like A Star Is Born, where she delivered unforgettable musical numbers that resonated with audiences. In summary, Judy Garland's impact on the film industry during her era and beyond cannot be overstated. Her exceptional talent, versatility, and lasting influence continue to inspire actors and filmmakers to this day. Through her significant role in Hollywood, she left a memorable impression on the world of entertainment that will be treasured for generations. In the famous movie Ziegfeld Follies, she performed alongside big stars like Fred Astaire, Lucille Ball, and Lena Horne. In A Star Is Born, playing Vicki Lester made her really happy, especially because she found out she was pregnant for the third time. She was only in two movies that were nominated for the Best Picture Oscar, The Wizard of Oz, and Judgment at Nuremberg. These were major moments in her career, showing how talented and versatile she was in movies. She played different kinds of roles, from musicals to serious dramas, showing how good she was at acting. Alongside her professional success, important personal events also affected her time in the spotlight. Ziegfeld Follies and A Star Is Born remind us of how great she was in Hollywood. Her performances still grab people's attention, leaving a strong impression on movie history. In the film Ziegfeld Follies, she was set to shine in various planned ideas that never made it to the screen. Among them was a spoof of the musical Lady in the Dark featuring her alongside Mickey Rooney, Lana Turner, and Fred Astaire. A minstrel number with a star-studded cast including her, Rooney, Astaire, Gene Kelly, Lou Holtz, and Nancy Walker was also in the mix. Unfortunately, many of these concepts, such as a skit with Wallace Beery and Marjorie Maine or a duet between Lena Horne and Herb Jeffries never materialized. In The Wizard of Oz, where she played Dorothy Gale, she faced difficulty summoning fear of Margaret Hamilton off-camera, as Hamilton proved to be a genuinely nice lady. The movie has become a timeless classic, and her portrayal of Dorothy remains in cinematic history. Moving on to Meet Me in St. Louis, she took on the role of Esther Smith. Interestingly, director Vincent Minnelli, enamored with her, visually framed her in the film using various elements like curtains, window frames, and flowers. This aspect is highlighted by Liza Minnelli, who considers the movie a favorite as it captures the moment when her parents fell in love. These films showcase her versatility and the influence she made in the world of cinema. Her ability to bring characters to life, whether as a whimsical Dorothy or a charming Esther, speaks volumes about her presence on the silver screen. In Easter Parade, she played Hannah Brown. Interestingly, her husband, Vincent Minnelli, was initially set to direct the film, but her psychiatrist advised against it. Judy Garland's presence on radio as a vocalist in Pepe is notable. An easy way to spot differences between versions of the film is the length of the faraway part of town dance sequence. If you listen to the soundtrack album, you'll hear Judy Garland's complete pre-recording of the song. It's interesting to note that in The Wizard of Oz, a munchkin named Mickey Carroll negotiated his salary cleverly. His agent, Zeppo Marx, secured him a weekly pay almost equal to Judy Garland's. In The Wizard of Oz, she played Dorothy Gale, inspiring the character Mary Ann on Gilligan's Island. Another memorable role was as Jane Falbury in Summerstock, her last film for MGM. Initially chosen for Royal Wedding with Fred Astaire, she had to step down and got replaced. During the making of I Could Go On Singing, 
Her behavior caused issues, leading co-star Sir Dirk Bogar to rewrite scenes, jokingly calling her it. Such stories reveal the challenges she faced in her career. Despite her talent, she encountered difficulties. The struggles behind the scenes show how unpredictable Hollywood can be. It highlights that even famous figures faced obstacles. Her experiences demonstrate the resilience needed in show business. Despite setbacks, her impact on the film world remains significant, influencing many. Her journey reveals the highs and lows of Hollywood. In the film Summerstock, Judy Garland encountered challenges due to fluctuations in her weight. The costume designer, Walter Plunkett, had to constantly adjust her wardrobe because her weight kept changing during filming. Plunkett used wide, open collars on her blouses to draw attention away from her waist. It's interesting to note that Garland's sudden change from being overweight to slim during the Get Happy number was quite noticeable. In Ziegfeld Follies, she appeared alongside Lucille Brimmer in dance routines with Fred Astaire. Brimmer, who was favored by studio boss Louis B. Mayer, also appeared in Meet Me in St. Louis, but decided to leave her film career despite Mayer's hopes for her stardom. During The Wizard of Oz, a subplot involving other characters was removed, but the Jitterbug number remained. Initially planned for Betty Janes and Kenny Baker, it was modified to showcase Garland's talents instead. Although the Jitterbug scene was cut from the final film, references to it still appeared in the script. Her roles demonstrated her versatility despite the challenges she faced during filming, leaving a lasting impression on the history of cinema. In The Pirate, she played Manuela, a role that had her smoking a lot of cigarettes every day during filming. By the time she was 37, she had already acted in 39 films, been on over 500 radio shows, and done around 57 concerts, according to her daughter Lorna Luft. One memorable moment in the movie was the strong connection between her and Gene Kelly in the voodoo song and dance scene. Their passionate performance made MGM chief Louis B. Mayer so mad that he ordered the film negatives to be destroyed. That's how powerful Garland's acting was, leaving a lasting impression on cinema and entertainment history. And I could go on singing, she portrayed Jenny Bowman. The project was initially pitched for TV, but later turned into a movie because of her rising career. As Esther Smith in Meet Me in St. Louis, Garland, a former child star, expressed concerns about young Margaret O'Brien's workload, fearing she might miss out on her childhood. However, O'Brien clarified that she enjoyed her role and the laws protecting child actors had improved. Garland, often noted as 4'11", was likely closer to 5'3", according to MGM press releases, and colleagues like June Allison and Esther Williams. Her caring nature towards fellow actors and her true height show a different side to the iconic figure we know. After marrying Vincent Minnelli, Judy Garland starred in The Harvey Girls in 1946. Later, she acted in Summerstock alongside Gene Kelly, making it their third movie together. In The Pirate, she played Manuela and had a memorable musical scene with Kelly. This part, with the Nicholas brothers, faced censorship in some southern states due to racial prejudice. Despite this, it remains an important moment in film history, showing Garland's talent with Kelly and the Nicholas Brothers. She was a big name in Hollywood, making a lasting impression on the entertainment industry. Her collaborations with Kelly and others established her as a skilled performer. Judy Garland's career spanned decades, and people still celebrate her work today. In the film A Star is Born, she delivered a performance that left fans clamoring for more. The first preview was a resounding success, with audiences urging, don't cut a single minute of it. The second preview, held on August 3, was equally triumphant, with the movie running a lengthy 196 minutes. In Girl Crazy, her portrayal of Ginger Grey led to a pivotal moment. During the filming of the big production number I Got Rhythm, she found herself at odds with the director's demanding choreography and grueling shooting schedule. Backed by co-star Mickey Rooney, she demanded the director's dismissal, leading to his replacement. During the filming of A Star is Born, she faced challenges that tested her resilience. Despite starting on her best behavior, she eventually struggled to maintain control. Battling sickness and dissatisfaction with her costumes, she caused delays that stretched the production schedule by 41 days. In late March, she took a two-week hiatus to detox from prescription medications, prolonging the production to nine months. Her journey through these movies reveals a performer dedicated to her craft, yet susceptible to the pressures of fame and production demands. Her ability to overcome challenges and deliver memorable performances solidified her status as a Hollywood icon. In Easter Parade, she played Hannah Brown alongside Fred Astaire, who was 49 at the time, while she was 26. 
In Summerstock, Gene Kelly, despite his disinterest in the film storyline, crafted a memorable routine out of devotion to her, as he recognized this movie as her last chance to revive her career. The funeral and memorial service drew a crowd of over 20,000, including her children, ex-husbands, colleagues, and admirers, with James Mason delivering the eulogy. The wide array of attendees spoke to the profound impact she had on the entertainment industry. In Meet Me in St. Louis, she played Esther Smith and wore a tennis outfit that was different from what women usually wore for tennis at that time. In Judgment at Nuremberg, she had a tough day and needed to do scenes again, which made her worried about her voice because she had a big performance coming up at the Hollywood Bowl. As Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz, there are some interesting facts the basket she carried was used by Elizabeth Taylor in Little Women, and the sets were reused for Little House on the Prairie. During the production of Little House on the Prairie, the famous yellow brick road from The Wizard of Oz was rediscovered, making Melissa Gilbert happy. Judy Garland's career was not only about her acting, but also about the things she left behind from her movies. In The Wizard of Oz, Margaret Hamilton, who played Miss Gulch, and the Wicked Witch hesitated to film scenes where Toto, Dorothy's dog, was in danger. Hamilton, an animal lover like Judy Garland, formed a bond with Terry, who portrayed Toto. Garland's final resting place is in Hollywood Forever Cemetery, where her children moved her remains in 2017. They wanted her close and shared the same burial ground with her childhood friend and co-star Mickey Rooney. Vincent Minnelli, Garland's husband, turned the pirate into a musical film after being captivated by its stage play. Minnelli worked closely with Barbara Karnska and Tom Kiag to recreate the play's costumes and collaborated with MGM's art department on set designs. With Cole Porter composing the music, Minnelli transformed the play into a musical comedy starring Garland and Gene Kelly. In a notable performance as Vicki Lester in A Star is Born, she pushed for nighttime shooting for the Born in a Trunk scene, adjusting to her body clock. This choice inflated the budget due to union demands for extra pay. Her role as Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz earned her a special Oscar, which she fondly dubbed the Munchkin Award. Another memorable portrayal was Esther Smith in Meet Me in St. Louis. Singing of the Smith family's address at 5135 Kensington Avenue, she tied the film to Sally Benson's original stories. Today, while Kensington Avenue remains residential, the lot at 5135 stands vacant. Judy Garland's impact on these films endures, each showcasing her unique talent and dedication to her craft. In the famous role of Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz, she left a lasting impression on movies. Her portrayal of Dorothy grabbed people's attention all around the world, making her a timeless icon of cinema. The song Over the Rainbow from the film became her most famous song during her singing career, touching the hearts of many and earning her lots of praise for her emotional singing. In Ziegfeld Girl, she played Susan Gallagher, showing how versatile she was as an actress. In one important scene in the movie, she acted alongside Gene Kelly, who briefly appeared with her. This scene is often remembered as Kelly's start in the movies, before he became famous for his role in For Me and My Gal. Her influence on both movies and music is clear, going beyond time, and leaving a strong impression on the entertainment industry. She wasn't just a performer, but someone who really caught people's attention with her amazing talent and charm. Her impact continues to inspire new artists and entertainers today. In the film The Wizard of Oz, she played Dorothy Gill. At first, she felt disappointed since the movie didn't do well at the box office. But later, it gained popularity, especially after CBS started showing it every Christmas from 1959 onwards. In Meet Me in St. Louis, Judy Garland faced challenges during filming. She struggled to understand what the director wanted from her. However, with reassurance from the producer and guidance from the director, she eventually delivered a brilliant performance. Initially perplexed by her character's motivations, she later embraced them, delivering both wistful and exuberant scenes with endearing brilliance. In The Pirate, the movie developed a cult following by the 1960s, especially overseas. During a performance in Australia in 1964, a mention of the film title garnered applause from the audience to which she humorously remarked to her fans. In each of these roles, she faced obstacles, but ultimately delivered memorable performances that endeared her to audiences worldwide. In A Star is Born, she portrayed Vicki Lester. The film underwent multiple edits, premiering at 181 minutes, later trimmed by 30 minutes despite objections from the director and producer. In 1983, much of the cut footage was recovered and reinstated, with some scenes reconstructed from production stills. In The Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland initially filmed under director Richard Thorpe, 
shooting scenes such as Dorothy's encounter with a scarecrow and the Wicked Witch's castle. However, Thorpe's footage, featuring a different appearance for Garland's Dorothy, was discarded. Surviving home movies offer glimpses of this unreleased footage. Regarding A Star is Born, a book co-authored by her daughter and a film historian was published in 2018, delving into the making of the film. And a great lady has an interview. There's an interesting scene with a strong picture in the background. The picture shows her without shoes and wearing a torn dress like in her role in Annie Get Your Gun. She almost got kicked out of that movie, but was replaced by Betty Hutton. She also did a great job in The Pirate as Manuela. They planned to make four movies with Gene Kelly, starting with For Me and My Gal, then The Pirate. But when Gene Kelly got hurt, they had to change plans for the next one, Easter Parade, and Fred Astaire took his place. The last movie in the series was Summerstock. She's not just famous for movies, her influence is seen in popular culture, with singers like Tori Amos, Lady Gaga, and U2 paying tribute to her in their songs. In Girl Crazy, she played Ginger Grey. The film ended up costing one $4 million, exceeding the budget by $323,000 due in part to Busby Berkeley's departure. Despite this, it became one of her most profitable musicals with Mickey Rooney, grossing $3,770,000. then, she portrayed Hannah Brown in Easter Parade, which hit theaters in 1948. It ranked as the second highest grossing film of that year, the following Road to Rio. The success of her pairing with Fred Astaire made up for the previous disappointment of the pirate. Various actors portrayed her in different productions like Judy Davis and Tammy Blanchard in Life with Judy Garland Me and My Shadows and Renee Zellweger in Judy. In The Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland portrayed Dorothy Gale. At 16 years old during filming, she had to wear a tight corset to appear younger and flat-chested for the role of a pre-adolescent child. When Dorothy opens the door in The Land of Oz, the transition from black and white to color is handled simply. The entire scene is shot in Technicolor, with the house's interior painted in shades of gray to mimic black and white photography. A double for Dorothy carrying Toto wears a gray dress to match the colored patterns on Garland's dress, creating the illusion from black and white to color seamlessly. In 1939, the child actors received honorary awards shaped like miniature Oscars, and Garland was among the recipients. She received one for her performance in the film. In a scene featuring Jane Falbury in Summerstock, a duet initially planned for the movie, Fall in Love, got cut. Sung by Gloria D. Haven and Phil Silvers, this song was later released alongside a soundtrack from a movie called In the Good Old Summertime, starring Judy Garland. Similarly, while playing Esther Smith in Meet Me in St. Louis, Judy Garland encountered a similar situation with a song titled Boys and Girls Like You and Me. Initially meant as a duet, it got replaced in the Broadway production of Oklahoma and later removed from the movie. Despite Judy Garland's version being dropped, the song endured, making its way onto her Decca album, and later sung by Frank Sinatra in Take Me Out to the Ball Game. However, there's no longer any footage of Judy Garland singing the song to Tom Drake. Her absence from the set led to production delays, extending the filming schedule of Meet Me in St. Louis. She missed 13 days of work, resulting in the production taking longer than planned. Despite these challenges, Judy Garland's performances continue to captivate audiences, even when some of her work remains unseen. In Meet Me in St. Louis, she played Esther Smith. After they finished filming, she and Vincent Minnelli went to New York. They saw a play called The Pirate and really liked it. Minnelli wanted to turn it into a movie with her, but MGM already had the rights. So they watched the play many times, paying attention to details. This led to the movie The Pirate, where she starred alongside Gene Kelly. She's most famous for playing Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz. That movie is well known for having five different directors. Richard Thorpe started it, but was replaced. George Cukor helped with makeup. Victor Fleming filmed most of the scenes. King Vidor did the black and white parts, and Mervyn Leroy worked on some scenes too. She acted in both The Pirate and The Wizard of Oz, leaving a lasting impression on cinema. Her performances still touch people all around the world. In Summerstock, Judy Garland took on the role of Jane Falbury. Interestingly, about seven minutes into the film, there's a scene where she flips a calendar to June 22, the day she passed away in 1969. On June 10, 2022, Liza Minnelli and Lorna Luft, daughters of Garland, honored their mother's centennial anniversary with a birthday gala at the Ebel in Los Angeles, California. At the event, they unveiled a new unisex fragrance inspired by Garland's personal scent. 
The fragrance, named Judy, incorporates elements like the Judy Garland Rose, Dark Orchid, Coriander, and various spice notes, making it inclusive and modern. It's priced at $140 per bottle. Garland received a special Academy Award in 1940 for exceptional performances as a screen juvenile. Mother-in-law of Jack Haley, Jr. the star in Ziegfeld Follies, Judy Garland, was part of a test run for the film at the Colonial Theater in Boston and later at the Nixon Theater in Pittsburgh. Despite a promising start, the movie faced setbacks due to audience reactions, prompting consideration of changes in its sequence and finale. Though Busby Berkeley was rumored to direct a new finale, it didn't materialize. The film eventually premiered in Manhattan and had a wide release in 1946. In A Star is Born, Garland played Vicki Lester, her second character named Esther after Esther Smith in Meet Me in St. Louis. In A Star is Born, she portrayed Vicki Lester. Directed by George Cukor, known for pushing actors to their limits emotionally, her performance was intense. During a pivotal breakdown scene in Esther's dressing room, the director drove her relentlessly, leading to physical illness before the first take. Despite this, he pushed for multiple retakes until satisfied. Yet, he balanced this intensity with humor, easing tension on set. After the final take, she wept uncontrollably. The director, displaying his unique blend of tough direction and empathy, comforted her with a humorous quip, acknowledging her exceptional performance. Her parents, Francis and Ethel Gum, along with sisters Mary Jane and Virginia, formed her family background. In Girl Crazy, she appeared as Ginger Gray. One notable song, Bronco Busters, sung by Mickey Rooney, her Nancy Walker and chorus was pre-recorded but not filmed, leaving its audio preserved. Judy Garland struggled with weight issues throughout her life, which sometimes caused problems during her movies like Words and Music and Summerstock. But she's best remembered as Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. Interestingly, a tornado hit Kansas when she died. During Summerstock, Gene Kelly, who had been her friend since they worked together on For Me, and my gal pretended to be hurt so she could take a day off when she wasn't feeling well. This showed how much he cared for her and understood her difficulties. Jean's kindness stood out in Hollywood, where people often competed fiercely. Their friendship went beyond just acting together. They shared experiences and respected each other's talents. Judy's legacy, shaped by her incredible talent and supported by friends like Jean Kelly, still inspires performers and audiences today. This story reminds us that friendship and compassion matter, even in the flashy world of show business. In A Star Is Born, she, playing Vicki Lester, echoes a scene from an earlier version where her character's name gets repeated to find its resonance. It's a subtle homage to the past. As Jenny Bowman and I could go on singing, she sang it never was you live on camera, breaking the norm of lip syncing to pre-recorded tracks in movie musicals. In Summerstock, portraying Jane Falbury, the iconic Get Happy number wasn't filmed with the rest. Months later, she had shed weight, sparking rumors it was for another film. Yet, she wore the same costume from a deleted scene in Easter Parade, adding to the legend. These instances underscore her dedication to her craft and her ability to leave a lasting impression on audiences, both on and off the screen. In Meet Me in St. Louis, she portrayed Esther Smith, sharing scenes with Marguerite Main, who she would later work with in Summerstock. In the latter film, she played Jane Falbury. However, during the filming of Summerstock, she faced struggles due to her drug addiction. This led to fluctuations in her weight, mood swings, and unexplained illnesses. Eventually, MGM terminated her contract after filming. Despite her talent and numerous appearances, she remained in debt during the 1960s. Her manager at the time, David Bajelman, embezzled hundreds of thousands of dollars from her and other clients. He even falsely claimed ownership of gifts meant for her, like the Cadillac from the Jack Parr program appearance. Such challenges marked a turbulent period in her life and career. In A Star is Born, Judy Garland played the role of Vicki Lester. Her co-star, James Mason, thought their version was better than the original because of her outstanding performance. He praised her talent, saying their adaptation became a classic because of her exceptional skills. During filming, there were tensions between Garland and vocal arranger Hugh Martin over her rendition of The Man That Got Away. Martin left the set, so Roger Edens, Garland's mentor, took over the vocal arrangements. Despite challenges, her portrayal of Vicki Lester remains a memorable part of cinematic history. Considered for the part of Karine O'Hara in Gone with the Wind, but didn't get it. Despite her talent, things didn't work out. But she kept getting chances. One time, she was offered the main role in The Three Faces of Eve. However, she said no because it reminded her too much of her own life. 
This showed she knew herself well and cared about it, which is not common in Hollywood. Instead, the role went to Joanne Woodward, who did an amazing job and won an Oscar for it. In another big project, The Pirate, both Gene Kelly, and she fought hard to include the Nicholas brothers. They knew how talented they were. Working together promised to be amazing and break new ground in storytelling. Sadly, because of racial prejudice, some scenes featuring the Nicholas brothers were cut in the South. It was tough to accept, showing how discrimination was everywhere back then. But their efforts to push for diversity in movies were great and left a strong impact on the industry. In the movie Ziegfeld Girl, she flawlessly portrayed Susan Gallagher, showcasing her undeniable talent. Despite her impeccable rendition of I'm Always Chasing Rainbows, it was surprising that she chose not to commercialize Minnie from Trinidad, a decision that allowed Jimmy Dorsey's orchestra to take the spotlight with the latter. She took on a new role as the host of the Judy Garland Show, a venture that, despite its high cost and the numerous challenges during production, failed to garner favorable ratings. Its struggle for success drew comparisons to TV's Cleopatra, making it clear that even her immense charm couldn't secure the show's triumph. Adding a touch of controversy, Mel Torm's memoir on the show was notably critical, shedding light on behind-the-scenes intricacies. One poignant moment in her life came during the 1955 Academy Awards, where she earned a nomination for Best Actress in A Star Is Born. Unfortunately, she missed the event due to hospitalization following the joyous occasion of giving birth. This unexpected turn of events undoubtedly added a bittersweet chapter to her journey in the world of entertainment. Looking back, her career was filled with highs and lows, triumphs and challenges, showcasing resilience and undeniable talent. Her impact on the entertainment industry remains significant, leaving a lasting mark as a true star. In the movie Ziegfeld Girl, she played the character Susan Gallagher. There's a scene called We Must Have Music that didn't make it to the final cut, where she sang and danced alongside Tony Martin in six hits and a miss. However, a short version of her performance was included in a separate film called We Must Have Music the Next Year. For Summerstock, where she was Jane Falbury, they decided to add a big performance for her character after the main filming. Dealing with personal challenges like weight concerns and another production happening nearby, she picked the song Get Happy. With the help of a hypnotist, she lost weight and gave an excellent performance after lots of preparation. In The Wizard of Oz, she played Dorothy Gale, and at one point you can see her holding back laughter during Bert Lars' portrayal of the Cowardly Lion. She always put in a lot of effort and talent into her roles, leaving a strong impression on the audience. In The Wizard of Oz, Judy Garland, famous for her role as Dorothy Gale, went through many changes. At first, George Cukor changed her appearance and adjusted the Scarecrow's makeup. Then, when Victor Fleming took over directing Jack Haley, who played the Tin Man film scenes, Buddy Epson, the original Tin Man, had to leave because of makeup allergies and only film later parts. Haley filmed without the rust on his costume for days until it was added to match the story. Despite being well-liked, the show starring Judy Garland faced difficulties. The Judy Garland show had low ratings compared to Bonanza, partly because CBS president James Aubrey didn't like Garland, the show only lasted one season, which might have contributed to Garland's later problems and early death. On August 15, 2021, Turner Classic Movies honored her movies during Summer Under the Stars. So, Judy Garland's career was full of memorable roles and challenges, leaving a lasting mark on entertainment. In the movie A Star is Born, she played Vicki Lester and gave a really great performance. One of the best parts was when she sang The Man That Got Away, which got nominated for an Oscar. They filmed that scene a bunch of times, trying out different setups, lighting, and outfits. Eventually, they went with a darker version where Judy wore a navy blue dress, making the club scene feel more intense. You can check out the different versions on Warner Home Video. She was born on the same day as Hattie McDaniel, who won an Academy Award. Even though she was really talented, she sometimes had trouble showing up on time for filming, so they got her friend Harry Rubin to help make sure she got the set. Judy Garland's career had some really memorable moments, but also some tough times. Her role in A Star is Born really showed off how talented she was and left a big impression on people. In Easter Parade, Judy Garland, portraying Hannah Brown, encountered a small hiccup during the filming of the song Fellow with an Umbrella. The dye from her hat's feather ran onto her face and jacket, leading the crew to improvise by coating it with Vaseline. This quick fix changed the feather's appearance between shots. In The Wizard of Oz, Garland's daughter, Liza Minnelli, had a familial connection to the film. Minnelli was married to Jack Haley Jr., 
the son of Jack Haley, who played the Tin Man from 1974 to 1979. Ziegfeld Girl featured Garland as Susan Gallagher, whose audition scene mirrored her real-life experience. Just like her character, Garland arrived at her MGM audition in 1935 accompanied by her father, Frank Gum. Initially struggling, her audition turned around when Roger Edens intervened, similar to Slayton in the film, guiding her to sing with more subtlety and securing her MGM contract. In The Wizard of Oz, she played Dorothy Gale. In one part, when Dorothy cried after being told to leave by the wizard's guard, her tears were real. She had just found out her pet dog had died, which made the scene very sad. This real emotion became a big part of her acting career and made people love her. After a break of four years, she came back to acting in a big way as Vicki Lester in A Star Is Born. People cheered for her return. The movie showed how talented she was, proving she hadn't lost her skill over the years. Playing Vicki Lester let her show a new side of her talent, and people loved how well she played the role. In Judgment at Nuremberg, she was Irene Hoffman. To get her accent just right, she got help from a language expert recommended by actress Jutta Hagen, who was from Germany. She worked hard to make her performances authentic, which made her stand out in Hollywood. She cared a lot about getting the details right, whether it was mastering accents or showing real emotions on screen, which made people everywhere feel connected to her. Throughout her career, she had a special way of touching people's hearts. It was like she could understand her characters deeply and share that with the audience, making every role she played unforgettable and moving. This special talent left a big mark in the film world, showing how amazing acting could be. To sum up, Judy Garland wasn't just an actress. She was a storyteller who made people feel deeply connected to her characters. Her performances were filled with genuine emotions and depth, making them timeless favorites for audiences. After serving as the music director on the short-lived CBS series, Mel Torme wrote a harsh tell-all book about his talented but challenging former boss. So frustrated from the experience, his words in The Other Side of the Rainbow with Judy Garland on the Dawn Patrol portrayed her as hopelessly drug-addicted, unprofessional, and difficult to work with. Torme's scathing account of their time together dealt a blow to the reputation of the TV movie star. In Meet Me in St. Louis, Judy Garland initially resisted the role of Esther Smith, feeling tired of playing yet another teenager despite being 21 during filming. However, director Vincent Minnelli persuaded her to take on the part, and she eventually embraced it, considering it one of her favorite roles later in life. Her initial reluctance turned into affection for the character and the story. In Summerstock, the struggles were evident as the actor's inability to report to work as scheduled caused continuity glitches in the final print. Scenes had to be patched up with blown up frames, and awkward freeze frames due to the emotional state during filming. Despite these challenges, the performance as Jane Falbury showcased talent, even amidst production difficulties. The journey in the entertainment industry was marked by both triumphs and tribulations, from contentious working relationships to memorable performances. The actor's resilience and talent continue to be remembered. In a famous scene from The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy and her friends encounter the Cowardly Lion, when the lion tries to bite Toto, Dorothy reacts quickly, hitting him on the nose. During this serious moment, Judy Garland, playing Dorothy, briefly breaks character, giggling at Bert Lars' performance as the lion. She discreetly covers her laughter, regaining composure to continue the scene smoothly. In Meet Me in St. Louis, during post-production, Judy Garland, who played Esther Smith, shared a close bond with director Vincent Minnelli. They were living together at that time, as mentioned in Minnelli's autobiography, showing how close they were beyond the screen. After Summerstock, director Charles Walters faced a problem. Initially set to direct Royal Wedding, delays during Summerstock production caused issues. When June Allison, the original choice for the role, had to step down due to pregnancy, Judy Garland emerged as the top contender. However, Walters, tired from the previous experience, appealed to producer Arthur Freed, expressing his inability to endure similar delays again, ultimately resigning from the assignment. Judy Garland's career was marked by memorable performances and behind-the-scenes dynamics showcasing her versatility and influence in the film industry. Judy Garland played Jenny Bowman in I Could Go On Singing. The costume designer, Edith Head, received criticism for the red dress worn during the performance of By Myself. However, Head clarified that she hadn't designed or approved it. Judy, whose ancestors hailed from Canada and Ireland, showcased her versatility in various roles, both on stage and on the radio. In Meet Me in St. Louis, a radio adaptation featured her reprising her role alongside Margaret O'Brien and Tom Drake. Her influence remains timeless. 
she continues to captivate audiences with her talent. In The Pirate, she played Manuela alongside Gene Kelly, which was their second movie together out of three. People loved watching them together. After that, she starred as Vicky Lester in A Star Is Born, which made her really famous. The movie premiered at the Fancy Panages Theater in Los Angeles, with lots of famous people there like her co-star James Mason and studio boss Jack L. Warner. The premiere was a big deal, with lots of cameras and excitement. She looked really elegant on the red carpet. Everyone was talking about how good she was going to be as Vicky Lester, a character who becomes a big star in Hollywood. Later on, she got even more famous when the U.S. Postal Service put her face on a stamp. It was part of a series celebrating old movies, and she was on it as Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz with Toto 2. The stamp was a way to remember how great she was in movies like Bo Jest, Stagecoach, and Gone with the Wind. She was a huge part of Hollywood's best times, and people will always remember her for being so talented and charming. Judy Garland's work keeps inspiring people, even now. In Meet Me in St. Louis, she played Esther Smith. There's a story behind Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas in the film. At first, the lyric was pretty grim, but she didn't want to sing it that way, especially to little Margaret O'Brien. So, the songwriters changed it to be more hopeful. In various films like Broadway Melody of 1938, Zeke Fell Girl, and For Me and My Girl, there were musical numbers with her that got cut. That includes songs like Yours and Mine, We Must Have Music and Boys and Girls Like You and Me. Even though she didn't get along with Lucille Brimmer while filming Meet Me in St. Louis, they had to work together. She tried to get Bremer removed because she didn't think Bremer was a good actress. But Bremer had support from higher-ups at MGM. Despite their off-screen tension, the sisterly dynamic between their characters, along with Margaret O'Brien's, was a highlight of the movie.